All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, so as promised this morning, uh, I was gonna do a video on uh, hauling and trailering basically uh, long distances with uh, the truck and trailer. So this is mostly, I mean, this could be utilized uh, throughout everything that you're gonna haul, uh, but more importantly for, uh, for fishing. And um, because if you're hauling any sort of distances, you really need to, you know, have your equipment in good shape to avoid uh, issues on the highway, basically. Uh, so behind me, I have a shot of the truck, basically just the corner here. I just, the yard's kind of muddy right now, so I'm kind of limited to where I can set up. And the boat's obviously hooked up here on the back. So to give you an overview of the equipment and what I'm using here to haul, uh, so the tow vehicle is, say, uh, 2019 Toyota Tundra TRD uh, SR5. Uh, that comes with the 5.7 liter V8 that I'm sure a lot of you people know and six speed transmission and um, Just kind of a little bit of insight uh, I was a diehard GM Chevy guy and I still kind of am at heart uh, switched over to Toyota in 2019 uh, Just because I was getting tired of the same old issues with the GMs basically and uh, not so much with engines or transmissions or anything like that. Uh, just with rust and everything. I mean, up here we use you know a ton of salt on the roads during the winter, and our winter could last you know six months. So GM still didn't really come up with a with a fix for this, right? So, uh, anyways, I wanted something a little bit you know different that I don't have to deal with every you know five to seven years that panels start rotting out and you have to worry about replacing boxes and everything so just a little bit of insight so anyways uh, I switched over to Toyota and uh, obviously I knew what I was going to be getting into uh, <coughs> you know with hauling and trailering and everything and uh, just watching the camera here we got a wind picking up so I'm hoping it's not going to blow over <laughs> but uh, so I'm going to stand a little closer here in case I got to catch it uh, so anyways, back to the whole truck package and everything else. Um, you don't need Toyota, you're a Ford guy, you're a GM guy, Dodge, whoever. Um, but your vehicle has to be in good shape. It doesn't have to be new, uh, but whenever you start hitting, you know, the 200,000 kilometer mark, uh, whenever that transfers over in miles, uh, you got to be concerned about engines, transmissions, and not so much with just traveling with the vehicle itself. You got to remember you're pulling 4,500 pounds plus behind you. And uh, I mean, from Ontario down to North Carolina, if uh, you Google that up, uh, I think we have the Appalachian Mountains that we pass and the Blue Ridge Mountains that we pass. And if any of you have ever driven that route, you know it's very hilly. Uh, lots of long upward pulls and uh, just around Fancy Gap, uh, North Carolina, uh, what is it, Virginia border, I guess, uh, if I'm correct on that, is uh, the fancy gap, and that is one heck of a haul, and you want to be able to uh, to haul that up. So in turn, uh, we've been down there four times uh, on this trip prior. Uh, different haul vehicles, this was the Tundra second time down. Prior to that, my partner had a uh, Ram 1500, and again, no issues hauling, uh, everything was good. And uh, prior to that, I used a 2007 GMC Sierra 1500 series, and that one, I probably contributed to, because not being the first time down is when I took that truck, and uh, about six months later, I blew head gaskets, and it has a 4.8 liter uh, V8, so a smaller V8 with only a three-speed overdrive transmission in it, and uh, that thing worked extremely hard. Uh, that was almost pedal to the floor the whole trip to try to keep momentum and everything else up. So, first and foremost with your tow vehicle, you need to be comfortable, you need to have reliability, and you need to have the capability to pull whatever package you're pulling behind you. Uh, so basically the truck I run, it is a stock truck. Uh, I did put a leveling kit in uh, that gives me, I think, three inches in the front, two inches in the back. 
and uh, 32 and a half, I think, uh, BF Goodrich KO2s on it. And um, so the only thing different with that is being that uh, the draw pitch at the back, and we'll touch on this here in a minute, is with the tow package, you need to make sure that your load behind you is going to be level. So you're going to have to get a drop ball. The truck already came with a two inch drop. I think I had to drop or upgrade to a four inch, if I'm not mistaken, and that gave me what I need. But every boat is probably going to be different depending on your axle and trailer tires, etc. And again, what you're hauling in the back, because the more you load up the back of your truck, you're going to squat that down and your trailer isn't going to be level then anymore. So before we hop on to the boat here, again, with the truck, you want to make sure you have the power, you have the torque, and you have the capability of hauling where you're going to haul. Do your research, make sure you know, because the last thing you want to do is be halfway through your trip and have tow vehicle issues because then your tow vehicle's down what do you do with your boat and then if you're already pre-registered for tournaments or whatever else a huge wrench gets thrown into it so before you do anything you need to make sure you have a good tow vehicle and you know if you're just fishing locally or whatever else that's totally different and we're not really touching on that right now this is long distance hauls right uh, traveling cross country, uh, cross borders, whatever it may be, uh, you need to make sure that your tow vehicle is in tip top condition and you know you have a good spare tire, whatever you need basically to uh, keep yourself moving. Uh, so, one more note on the truck is uh, obviously different tires on this um, factory. Uh, air pressure is I think like 32 33 psi and every time I take the truck in they always bring down my tire pressure right back down to the stock I run at 45 psi and all my tow trucks basically uh, so this one being the main trip truck uh, I have another Tundra as a shop truck and another truck then as a shop truck as well and they all run the KO2s the BF Goodrich and they're all set at 45 psi if you're just driving this as a daily driver, whatever else, 32, 33 PSI is fine. The minute you start putting weight and everything in, it's time to bump up your tire pressures. Uh, so 45 is my happy place. Uh, everything runs great on that. And again, you know, as you increase tire pressure in your tire, technically your tire, you know, starts curving like that, right? But you got to remember, you're going to have your load and everything. You don't want your tire to be indent and you're going to run the outsides. You want it, you know, flat on the bottom. Right, 100% uh, contact, and uh, 45 gets me to where I need to be. Whether there's anything scientific to that, or it's just a number in my head, uh, you know, 45 uh, seems to give me. I got no squat, nothing like that. And uh, with 32, 33, the back tires they're bulged a little bit, right? So, uh, so tire pressures are a big thing, especially on long hauls like that. And your season's going to matter too, right? I mean, if you're hauling and it's you know, 40 degrees Celsius out. And asphalt temperature is up there as well uh, you're going to be creating heat and uh, you're, you're going to build tire pressure so it's something to keep an eye on and uh, you know, keep an eye on tire pressure you know 1500 2000 kilometer trips um, you know hard to judge but uh, if your tires are worn down at all or anything like that it's something to keep an eye on so i think we covered the tow vehicle aspect of it and you know i don't really have anything again I don't really it doesn't matter what you're hauling with you just need to know that it's reliable uh, it's going to do the job you need it to do and you want to have a little bit of extra power versus being underpowered um, trust me from experience <clears throat> you want to know that you have the power to pull out and pass and get out of you know bad situations on the highway when you have to like if you got to punch it to pass a vehicle or whatever else is happening around you you need to know that you have that capability because at 70 mile an hour plus the last thing you want to be doing is slamming on the brakes and causing you know a huge pile up uh not so much they're going to pile into you but they're going to pile into your boat uh so anyways with that being said let's move on to uh the trailer here and we'll touch on the key things that uh, you 
really do need to do if you're planning any long distance hauls. All right, so here we are at our hitch point basically. And obviously, you know, the, the basic things is you need to have the proper ball, the proper receiver, and you wanna keep, when your truck is sitting level, you wanna make sure that your trailer is level. You don't wanna sit up, you don't wanna pitch down. You want it, you know, as level as possible with your vehicle loaded with all your gear, ready to roll, and your boat loaded up, ready to roll, right? So that is a critical part, uh, both for braking and for control issues. So that's not, you know, not rocket science, but you need to pay attention to this, right? If it means going down to your local parts dis distributor or what have you to get a drop-down hitch and it's going to cost another 70 bucks, so be it. Um, you know, if you've already got money invested in a tow vehicle, your boat, I mean, that's a small thing to take care of, right? So that's the one thing. That's probably, you know, one of the most critical next thing is your safety chains and you want to make sure that a you have enough slack b you have two chains not one chain all looped together with a couple bolts uh you if you have any issues you want that to stay with you so that you know your boat your trailer's not taken off passing lanes of traffic and you know doing things you don't want it to do uh so you want to be able to make sure that you can turn both ways uh they're not getting tight on you they're not bending they're not stretching dragon on the ground as well. Uh, check with your local state and provincial laws. Um, a lot of people will just wrap their chains. So you're going to see mine are wrapped down here too. Uh, but there is, I know for a fact, in a couple states in the U.S. that uh, you're limited to how many wraps you're able to have in your chain. Uh, so if you have any questions on that, on that, then consult, you know, your local DOT or MTO and uh, they'll be able to give you proper answer. Uh, the, second, the third thing here now is we also have a breakaway cable right here and if your trailer has brakes on it you're going to have one of these cables. And what this is designed to do is that if you have any issues on that hitch, if anything happens it comes off, ball brakes, uh, coupler brakes, whatever, it is, is that when that pulls out that's locking up your brakes. So at least that way when this boat is still secured to your truck via the safety chains and that cable, when everything breaks away and it pulls on that cable, that's activating the brakes. So that's helping you slow down, stop, get you know somewhere safe off the road um, and keep as much control as possible while that's happening. Um, the next thing is lights. And this is a big thing. Uh, you need to be seen. here after our trip down uh, I took a look at the trailer after the boat was off about five days later give or take and uh, I did have to do some wiring repairs uh, the salt and the corrosion that were on these connectors I couldn't believe it after five days and this was after washing everything down and being in the water and whatever else it was crazy uh, so you want to be prepared for you know uh, looking after your lights so spare bulbs uh, inserts, you know, whatever lights you have, make sure that you know what kind of lights you have so that, you know, if you're really stopping to get fuel and you do have a light out or whatever it may be, you have the ability to change it out. You're not looking for a low parts place, you know, it's not after hours, you're not running in the middle of the night with no lights or, you know, no left light, no right light, whatever it may be. Carry spares. I mean, if they're 1157 bulbs, fine. If they're actual like oval inserts, LEDs, what have you, carry at least one of each in your travel vehicle and then you have it done over with. Um, again, the amount of gear I carry with me, I stop them back here and 
again, I'm in the trade and I'm able to fix everything myself. So I carry a lot more than what any other person probably is going to carry on these trips. Uh, but the fact is that I can make the repairs myself. I know the most common uh, points of where or failure are going to be either on the trailer, uh, the tow vehicle, or with the boat. So I keep all the spare parts, you know, fuel pumps, uh, fuel filters, you know, things that are most common to go wrong that are going to give you issues. I carry all that with me. I'm not saying that you have to carry everything for your boat or your tow vehicle for repairs, but I mean something as simple as washer fluid and replacement bulbs for your vehicle and your trailer and fuses. Everybody should know how to change that stuff and you know how to make a small little repair like that, basically. Uh, so that's all our lights. <coughs> we'll, uh, we'll walk back to the back of the trailer here in a minute, but I also want to touch on the winch, your safety chain, and this strap here. So again, with your winch, you want a functioning winch. Make sure the winch works. There's no stripped teeth on it. Uh, it's fully functioning. It doesn't, you know, you get two inches from the end and it ratchets on you. Uh, you want to make sure that every tooth there is good. Uh, it's solid and you have no issues with it. Uh, this is your most critical point because you're loading your boat with this and it's holding the boat all the way forward for you. Next one, safety chain. If anything ever happens to your strap here, that safety chain is going to help keep that boat on the trailer. Uh, you've probably seen videos or whatever, boats sitting on top of trucks. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, poor planning basically, right? You, you just don't, you don't put a piece of rope, in like a piece of rope around your winch or around the boat, that's not gonna do anything for you. Uh, <coughs> you know, it's it, it's a joke almost if you're using a piece of rope. Uh, so this strap here, you can see I have an extra strap here. So what this does, and this is from experience from long hauls, is this is all the way up. My bumper is all the way down to where it needs to be on my boat and every boat's gonna be different. But there's gonna be a place where that needs to be. You don't want your boat, you know, two inches away, three inches away from that front uh, mount. You want that boat in there, like solid. It, there should be no movement whatsoever. That has to be solid up front. Uh, this is a swivel point. You want that all the way up, you know, locked in there 100%. Uh, so what this strap does is this strap's going to pull down on the boat for you and it's going to prevent, you know, any little bit of bounce or whatever else. It takes some stress off of your winch strap. Uh, so the more that you can have up there, the better. Uh, again, the safety chain is just that. It's just a safety chain. It's not really doing anything unless there's an emergency. So that leads you to everything's on this one strap. By adding that second strap in there, take some pressure off of that and good to go. Something else I carry with me, spare winch strap. Um, tying a knot in there and everything else. You're at the local boat ramp, I'll get you home. Uh, when you're traveling a couple thousand kilometers or miles, you want a winch strap. Uh, brutally honest. There's no way around it really. Um, so I think that covers everything here on the front. Um, by all means, make sure you have a tongue jack. I mean, for me being in the trade, the worst thing I see coming in the yard is people with no tongue jack. I, <laughs> I, I just don't get it. For 50 bucks, you have a tongue jack, you're not breaking your back. And I mean, it's at the point now where you come into the shop, you don't have a tongue jack, guess what? You're getting a tongue jack. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, not free, you're paying for it too. But uh, <coughs> yeah, it's just, you, you need to have a tongue jack. For 50 bucks, why not? Um, you know, if you're invested with the boat or the boat and the truck, I mean, again, what's 50 bucks? If you can't afford the 50 bucks, chances are you're not putting fuel in the boat either. Uh, so, anyways, I think that covers that. You're going to notice down here too, <coughs> so I do have, because of where I'm traveling and whatever else, and uh, I do lock the trailer onto the hitch. I also have a lock on the hitch itself. So everything right there, <coughs> excuse me, is locked. You also want to check with your insurance company and advise them with what you're doing with your boat because there might be things that you need to follow like this, keeping your boat locked, keeping the receiver on the truck locked. Um, so before you 
you know, commit to doing any of these trips or whatever else. You definitely want to make sure that your insurance is aware that A, you're towing with your vehicle, you're towing your boat with your vehicle, where you're going with it, and you know, you, you want to make sure you're abiding by all the laws or all the rules because if something happens, you know, they might just say, sorry about that, but uh, you know, we didn't know that that's what you're doing with your boat, so um, we're not going to cover you. Trust me, that's the last thing you want. So call up your agent, have a conversation with them. I mean, you're going to be better educated. You have a record saying that I contacted so and so. Get an email to you, and then you're covered. It's that easy. Um, if you're going through all this time of booking trips, you know, hotel rooms, verbos, what have you, you know, take the extra time to call your insurance company and make sure that you're insured. Um, again, there's nothing worse with, you know, having to put in a claim and finding out that you're not covered. Uh, and then another thing with, on the fishing side of things is if you're traveling out of province, out of state, and even if you're not, is if you have a, a bass boat, a fishing boat, whatever else, make sure your insurance company knows that you're fishing tournaments. There's no extra cost to it or whatever else, just make sure that they know. Because again, if anything happens during the tournament, you get hit by another boat, you hit another boat, or vice, you know, whatever happens, you run over a rock shoal during a tournament, they're gonna ask you what you what you were doing on that lake, and you're gonna tell them I was fishing a tournament or whatever else, and not saying that you're gonna hide that from them, but even, you know, they're gonna find out. Um, what, why try to hide stuff? Just be open and transparent with it. It's not gonna cost you anything um, from experience. And, you know, at least here in Ontario, uh, I'm in contact with my insurance companies quite a bit. And I mean, yes, because I have multiple vehicles uh, for the business policy, uh, marine operator policy. Like there's a bunch of insurance that we need to have, right? So I have a very open relationship with my insurance company, my broker, uh, the representatives there. I mean, first name basis, I call them up, they're there. Any questions, answer. Uh, awesome people to deal with get to know your insurance broker and I should mention this probably too is if you are fishing tournaments make sure you have insurance on your boat because a lot of um, and I'm not sure how this is down in the US but I know here in Ontario is you need to show proof of insurance in order to uh, fish a tournament uh, if you can't show proof of liability over, I think it's a million or two million, whatever it is now, uh, technically you're not able to fish this tournament, right? So a lot of guys fudge it, but um, if something ever happened, uh, you could be liable for this. And uh, yeah, however they ding you on that, whether it's fraud or whatever else, I mean, they can they can make your life a living nightmare basically for not having insurance, right? Uh, again, if anything should happen, so. You know, you're always preparing for the worst, but you always hope the worst never happens, right? Uh, so anyways, I think that's that. Let's move to the back. Uh, I'll show you a few things back there. And uh, we'll discuss tires and whatever else. And uh, keep going. Here we are about midway back. We're at the axle point. Anyways, and the same as with your tow vehicle, um, your tires on your trailer need to be up to the job. Uh, so traveling locally and this is where things get a little complicated right because nobody wants to put rubber on their boat trailer because I'm only going from my house to my boat dock and blah 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 uh, if your tires are all weather checked and everything else yeah I get it you're only going a couple kilometers couple miles what have you <coughs> but without this trailer you're not going boating so again you're already invested into a tow vehicle you're already invested into the boat. This trailer is part of this boat. So if you're hauling anywhere, trailering anywhere, you need to have a capable trailer of doing the job. Uh, so the biggest part of that is where, the, you know, everything meets the road, which is with the rubber. So again, you wanna make sure your tires are in good condition and your rims are in good condition so you don't have air leaks or anything like that. Um, no weather check. 
highway speeds, I mean, you want these tires to be able to handle it, right? Another thing that I recommend that you're not going to hear a lot of is getting these tires balanced. So if you're just running, you know, the local circuit, you know, a couple kilometers here and there, whatever else, you know, once every third Saturday during the summer, whatever. Uh, totally up to you. But if you're hauling highway speeds, any distance, you know, over, you know, an hour basically. I, I mean, I would even recommend getting it done locally only because it only costs a few bucks, right? Um, if you're putting new rubber, new rims on, go to a tire shop, have them put them on the tire balancer. It costs 10 bucks a tire. Just get it done. It balances it out. And to be honest, <coughs> you're going to notice a huge difference hauling down the highway. Um, with Typically, they don't, they don't balance trailer tires. Uh for the fact that nobody goes far enough though, right? But, you know, it saves everything shake, rattle, and rolling down the road. If it costs you a few bucks for tire weights and, you know, 50 minutes of your time, uh, you're gonna be uh, a lot happier. And trust me, it's gonna ride a lot better. Um, you know, your boat's gonna thank you for not shake, rattle, and rolling as much. And, uh, you know, it, it's just good practice. So something that people really don't think of is getting your trailer tires balanced. I highly recommend you guys do this. The next thing is you need to have a full size spare for this trailer. Um, you need to have the matching set basically that if you have a blowout, it's just a matter of jacking it up, putting on another one, continuing on your ride. Um, the last thing you want on a trip is put on, you know, Mickey Mouse spares or, you know, yeah, it's the same bolt pattern, but the tire sizes are different. Your trailer's sitting like this. And that's the same as with the truck is I have, uh, larger than stock tires on there so you need to have a matching tire for your spare you can't run your OE spare if you upgrade your tires so you know because the chances are if you have a blowout on one of these tires you're probably not going to be able to get that matching tire wherever you get located basically and you don't want to be stuck somewhere on the interstate or the Trans Canada or something like that you know hours outside of a town where that's your closest tire shop and they don't have a matching tire or whatever it's going to be and again this is throwing wrenches into your whole trip right so you want to know that if you have a problem you know you pull over you address it you're on your way so full size spare for your boat trailer make sure your all three tires for your boat trailer including your spare are in good condition if you're running tandem axle you know that's five tires but you got to have five good tires. Uh, if you got weather checking, you got rust around your valve stem, um, you know, uh, you got bulges on the side of the tire, you got tread that's worn down on one side but good on the other, these all have to be changed. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Again, if you're investing, and I'm going to hammer this home, if you're investing the time to fish out of state, out of province, uh, haul long distances for fishing you need to be prepared so there, there's no cutting corners on this if you want to cut corners on your hotel or your accommodations cut them there um, but don't go and get you know the $500 a night verbo for 10 days and say oh I can't afford to get my $70 drop down hitch or you know I can't afford to have you know non weather check tires or I can't afford to have a spare well you know, I hate to say it, you know, when things go south for you, they're going to go south. So either you pay for this up front and you make it all right as be as prepared as you can be, or you run the risk of having a huge bill, you know, for unexpected accommodations, uh, tow, tow bills, recovery bills, uh, what have you. Like the repair side of it will cost you more than being prepared for. <coughs> Excuse me. So, again, you need to have good tires on your tow vehicle. You need to have a full size spare to match your tires on your tow vehicle. Um, your trailer tires have to be good, and your rims have to be good, and you got to have a full size spare for your trailer. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. There, there's no, there's no way around this. We're not trying to sugarcoat in, right? Um, that being said, wheel bearings. That's the next big thing. 
Um, those wheel bearings need to be looked after. Whenever you're stopping for fuel, you need to be checking for heat. And I mean, checking for heat, you don't need to have a temp gun or anything. Just as simple as bending down, touching the hubs. They're gonna be warm, but that's it. If they're hot, 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 or you hear them sizzling, you have issues. Um, but before you go, either yourself or bring it to a shop. We do it all the time for people that are going fishing, you know, up north, wherever. Um, bring it to a shop, have them check out your trailer. Pay the hour labor, pay, you know, whatever it's gonna be. If it's 150 bucks, it's 150 bucks. So be it. But at least, you know, your trailer is ready to roll. Um, so what we do here, and we'll touch on this in the coming weeks as we get into the summer, is part of our summarization with your boat, we inspect your trailer. Uh, so we do just a basic inspection. We let you know about tire wear. We let you know about air pressure. Well, we set the air pressure for you, uh, what it should be. Um, we check your wheel bearings. Uh, they get greased, either at summerizing or at winterizing. You know, they get greased. Uh, but we check them. We don't pull everything apart, but we jack it up, we spin them around. You hear any noise, you need to get them addressed. If you see grease that's flying out either on the rim or on the backside, on the brakes, whatever else, you need to get these serviced. Um, you have a wheel bearing going down on the highway, it's not going to be fun. If you cook a wheel bearing while you're traveling, and this is whether it's local, highway, whatever else, if you've gotten to the point where you have, you know, destroyed a wheel bearing, chances are you're destroying your axle. Uh, this is uh, drum brakes. So chances are you're destroying your hub uh, for the braking system. Or, you know, if you have no brakes, you're still destroying that hub. And there's going to be heat damage and everything. So you can go from replacing a $25 wheel bearing and preventing the maintenance to I need a new axle, I need a new hub, uh, I need new brakes. I mean, it can go south so quick. And this is why you need to be prepared. Um, I, I, I think maybe really what I'm getting at here is before you even decide that you're going to fish, you know, you've already looked and say, okay, entry fees are, you know, whatever they are, 240 bucks, 360, whatever it's gonna be, entry fee. Yeah, that, oh, that's fine. Um, you know, we're gonna do a five night verbo. Uh, it's, you know, it's gonna be a hundred bucks for you, a hundred bucks for your buddy uh, per, per night, you know, you can afford that. Before you book anything, before you book your tournament, before you book your verbo, before you start planning your dock parties and what, what have you, um, before you do that, you need to know that you or your partner um, have a solid tow vehicle. Um, once the tow vehicle is looked at, you need to look at your boat and you need to make sure that your boat's in good condition to go. Um, and maybe even before the boat, uh, you need to look at your trailer. Uh, again, with the frame of the trailer, you don't want any cracking in the frame, nothing like that. It needs to be solid, guys. And I, I don't know how how else more to even hammer this home to you, but everything needs to be solid. It needs to be in good working order. And let's be honest, not everybody has brand new equipment. I don't have brand new equipment. The truck, it's 2019, it's basically brand new. It has very little mileage on it. I usually only use it for either family time, family trips, or for fishing. That's all that truck gets used for. I drive shop trucks the rest of the time, basically. Um, so, again, as with the drive down, that's my baby. So, you know, it is what it is. The boat behind me, it's a 95, okay? Uh, the trailer's a 95 as well. It's not brand new equipment. Um, I've upgraded the outboard. I've upgraded all the electronics. I've upgraded the trolley motor. I've done new carpet in the boat. I've looked at buying a new boat. For me, I'm in this trade. I have less time to boat than everybody else does. Everybody thinks that, you know, because you're in this trade, oh, you're always boating. No. If I'm working on your boat, chances are I'm the guy in the shop. You guys are the ones out on the water. So I can't justify an eighty-five dollars to $100,000 bass boat. Would I like one? Hell yeah. Who wouldn't? But I, I can't justify it. it just, I, I just cannot justify. If I was maybe in the States, if I lived in North Carolina or something like that, where I could fish 12 months out of the year, that would be a different scenario. We get three months of good weather up here, if we're lucky. Three months. 
So Bass doesn't open until, like I said already this morning, the fourth Saturday in June. So that gives you July, August, September. The weather goes for shit after that. So I mean, the average person up here for bass fishing, three months. 85 to 100 grand? Doesn't make sense, right? Uh, so again, but all upgraded equipment on it. Keep the boat in good shape. I've looked at boats. I've even looked at, you know, not upgrading to new, but just upgrading the boat. It's the same damn boat. Yeah, okay, the gel coat's not as faded on it. Uh, you know, it looks a little bit more flashy. The layout's all the same. It's the same damn boat. So, why, right? If you got a good outboard on the back, you know, the boat motor itself is a 2015. Uh, still has warranty left on it. Uh, Chilean motor's new a couple of years ago. Electronics have all been updated the last couple of years. Uh, all new carpet in the boat. I've gone through this boat front to back. I mean, you know, it, again, I'm fortunate enough that I do all the repairs myself. So it's more efficient for me to do it that way, right? It makes more sense. I get that with a lot of people out there that, you know, you might own an older boat too. It's just maintenance. That's all it is. Maintenance. You don't need to have top of the line equipment to go out and do this stuff but you need to know it's reliable, it's gonna get you from point A to point B. I redid this trailer, I think my first trip was in 18. I redid this trailer in 2019. Uh, went through it front to back, did a complete sand down strip, uh, did any repairs I needed to do, all new brakes, everything, front to back, done. Um, you know, but this is all stuff you need to do if you're gonna do this stuff. So you don't need brand new equipment, you need to look after your equipment. Don't let it get to the point of it not of needing major repairs. If you do it over time, it's a lot more practical, it's a lot more cost efficient, doesn't you know hurt the pocketbook as much whenever something goes wrong. Um, you know, the snowball effect. If you just keep putting stuff off, putting stuff off, putting stuff off, eventually, um, you know, all this stuff comes to a head, it needs to be looked at, needs to be repaired. And at that point, you might be contemplating, well, geez, why, why does it cost so much? Or how did I let it get to this point? Lack of preventative maintenance. So, in a nutshell, you need to look after all this stuff. Um, so, I apologize if I'm harping a bit here, and maybe some of you guys don't like what I'm going to say, or have already said, um, but that's just the fact of it. And yeah, you can hop in your truck right now, hook up to your boat, go fish Virginia, wherever right now, and maybe everything will be fine. And maybe you won't need to spend any money and you'll think, oh, what is he talking about? What does he know? But I can guarantee you, if you're gonna do it long enough, you're gonna run into issues. And if you're thinking that you'll deal with it whenever it gets there, well, let me tell you, you're not gonna be at your local shop anymore. You're not gonna be at your local car dealer. You're not gonna be at your local, um, marine repair shop you're going to be out of town and when you're out of town you don't know anybody you know they're just looking at you nine times out of ten thinking hey you're from out of state you know like here here we go uh money time this guy's kind of screwed he's in the middle of nowhere and uh, he needs to get fixed up so the price is going to be the price um you know it just it is what it is i'm not saying that's wrong business is business um you know but if you want to avoid all this, this is what you need to do. And I mean, why not, you know, get this all looked after, support your local car dealership, your local repair shop, your local boat repair shop. Uh, I mean, it just makes sense. And I don't really know how else to put it. I, if you plan on doing anything like this, you want to have enjoyable experiences as much as possible. So, you have to put in the time and effort into your tow vehicle, your trailer, in order to put your boat in the water. Because that boat going in the water is dependent on that trailer and whatever you're pulling that trailer trailer with. So, just about covers it. I'm gonna hop around to the back here. Uh, it's kind of muddy, but uh, we're gonna hop around to the back. I'm gonna show you a few other things that I do. And this video is getting long enough, so. Um, we're just gonna touch base on that and then I'll cut you guys loose for today and uh, we'll join back up here after. So uh, let me reposition and we'll get going. 
Okay, so here we are, we're at the back of the trailer here now. And, um, <coughs> so obviously I have a transom saver and I have my back straps. You need to have the back straps. Um, again, you've seen videos, pictures of boats sitting on top of vehicles. <coughs> you need to have these back straps. Uh, first of all, you don't want the boat to be bouncing on the trailer. You want that solid. Uh, you want your load secure, basically your boat's your load. You want it secure to the trailer. You need to have the back straps. Um, these ones from Boat Buckle, I'm sure you've all seen them here before. Uh, they bolt directly to the trailer, so you don't have to worry about losing them, misplacing them, borrowing them, and never bringing them back to the boat. They stay with the boat, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> so they work really slick, really nice to use. Um, easy release, push a button, they come off, hook them back up, ratchet down, done. Uh, too easy. Um, so you can do it yourself, your local boat shop, whoever, they can do this for you. Uh, very easy. And I even think you can pick up Bass Pro Shops. So why not? Make sure they're right in for your boat. Don't get 500 pound straps. <coughs> your boat weighs more than 500 pounds. Know what your boat weighs. You need to know this anyways for hauling. Um, you need to know what the total weight of your package is that you're hauling, full of gear, and everything else, you know, to have the proper fit for your tow gear. Next thing is transfer saver. You need a transfer saver. Um, you know, there, there is an argument out there that, oh, it puts a lot of pressure on the back of the boat and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what else puts a lot of pressure on the back of the boat? A 600 pound motor that's sitting 10 inches off the back, attached by four bolts. Um, you want to put a transom in your boat? Uh, haul it without a transom saver. Uh, because if you do long hauls, and even over time, um, it's going to get the best of you. Again, transom savers, 100 bucks. Get a friggin' transom saver. Um, you know, make sure you're utilizing the rubber strap. Make sure that the rubber strap is in good condition. Again, <clears throat> if anything ever came loose back here, this is keeping your transfer saver secure to the motor so that you don't lose 100 bucks on the highway. Um, something else that I also do go to, either A, a rubber strap around the transfer saver where it mounts. Mine is a, is a roller mount, so it has a U shape that goes onto the U. Um, so if that's my roller and this is my mount, you know, you know, it goes like that. And that's a whole other thing, right? Uh, so either put a strap around that, <coughs> around the backside, or like what I do, electrical tape. And uh, I use electrical tape for a lot of stuff. You're gonna see it right up here. Stop stuff from rattling and uh, <coughs> from wear and tear. I mean, two, 3,000 kilometers, and everything rattles and shakes and vibrates, and eventually it's gonna wear out. If you can stop that vibration and the rattling and the wear and tear, your stuff's gonna last a lot longer. Uh, again, experience, right? Um, so that's the big thing. Um, so make sure that you're welded up back here. You also see on the back here, um, again, I shrink wrap for hauling. I think I touched on this in one of the past videos while I was down there. And uh, interesting enough, yesterday when we crossed the border, the border official even asked, well, why do you shrink wrap your boat? And it's not for the fact of hiding or concealing anything. The next thing about shrink wrapping the boat is A, wear and tear on your cover. That's out the window. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about it. If, you, if you're fortunate enough to have a good enough cover, that'll do just as well. Uh, but you need to make sure that that cover stays in good condition. I mean, just with being in sunlight, the UV rays, um, you know, it deteriorates covers quick, and I had mentioned about a uh, chum of mine who tore his cover apart on the highway. Um, that's kind of where this idea came in. The other nice thing about this is you can put other gear under here, and yeah, it's just a piece of plastic. It just looks a little bit more secure. I mean, to be honest, are you going to go ravage through, you know, you think of a thief or anybody like that in a sense of you're going to go for the easy target. The easy target is to hop into the boat with no cover on 
The second easiest target is to hop into a boat that has a cover on, because again, that comes off fairly easy. The hardest target, I think, and this is me, I mean, let me know if you guys think differently, the hardest target, I think, is this. Yeah, you can take a knife and cut into it, but if you're anything like me, uh, so everything's locked up inside. So once you're into this, now you have to, you know, try to get into the compartments. And I mean, a skilled, you know, uh, thief can uh, can get in there, no, no doubt in my mind. Uh, all my electronics are off of here. Uh, the Troy motor is bolted onto the boat, and the fact that there's shrink wrap over it makes it that much more difficult because it's a cinch point for the shrink wrap. So it's not a two minute job to hack a Troy motor off of here anymore, right? Um, so it just makes everything a lot more secure. Uh, you have your motor protected here at the back. And I, I mean, you cut down on all that wear and tear, all the road grime. Uh, if you ever interstate travel with your boat, I mean, you know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, it gets filthy. And I mean, you guys saw with this time of year, you know, hauling, what was it, 11 days ago down south? This thing was covered with everything. I mean, gross, right? Snow, ice, you name it, right? Um, obviously we washed it all off at the car wash and then I checked everything over and blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyways, back to the whole thing. Yeah, it's probably not practical for most of you guys out there. Um, but I do have a shrink wrap video out there. And even if you have to store your boat and you know, over time, if you learn to shrink wrap yourself and you're looking at hauling and everything else and you got to shrink wrap your boat for storage anyways, um, maybe it's in your best interest to invest in the shrink wrapping and uh, you know, you get good enough at it and uh, your buddies probably all have boats and uh, you know, you charge them materials or whatever to, uh, to do their boats at the end of the season and you know, you get together for a barbecue and a couple adult beverages and uh, hey, there you go, right? So. Uh, something to consider um but anyways you don't have to do this but you know i'm a little bit off topic here again but back to the whole reflectors your trailer lights are all the way over here so here's where your trailer light is you have four feet of distance basically from the trailer light to the back of this motor during the day um probably not going to be an issue uh, everybody's going to see this at night and you know they're seeing these lights way up here they're not realizing how far this sticks out and you know with all that weather and everything that we drove through even that because I thought my lights and everything would be all covered with slush thankfully they weren't but this is high enough up that you know it's protected so even if you are going to cover your boat and you're going to trailer with a cover, get some reflective patches or something sewn into the back. Or if you have an engine cover that either attaches to your cover or a separate engine cover, get some reflective patches sewn into that cover. And then that way you know that you're covered back there. And if you ever do run into an accident or whatever, you know, you can prove to the officer you can prove to the insurance company, I did everything in my power to protect and make sure that I was being safe. My trailer's in tip top condition, my lights were all working. I even went as far as made sure I had reflective tape on my shrink wrap or I have reflective patches sewn into my cover or engine cover. Um, again, for the amount of money that this costs, you know, you could just imagine, um, you know, uh, the cost of having to, you know, replace an outboard motor or whatever else like that, right? Um, so across the back, I have a series of three lights, three lights on the cross frame across, um, lights at the back, obviously you turn uh, drive lights and then throughout the trailer, there's lights going all the way up. Um, so the more visible you can be, uh, the better it is. Uh, so I think that's everything. Um, I, I don't think, I, I probably did forget something. And, you know, if you guys have questions or anything about this or whatever else, uh, by all means, you know, reach out and I'll do my best to get you an answer or help you out in uh, finding the answer. Um, sorry, my nose is a little stuffy here today. <coughs> um, just getting back to, uh, I got allergies and whatever else. So uh, getting back, the snow's all melting. So all this 
you know, garbage and everything coming through out of the muck and everything else is kind of affecting it. And uh, they actually clear cut the lot here across from me when I was away. And, uh, you know, all the uh, moss and mold and everything in the bush, they're coming out too. So I uh, guess I better go pop some allergy pills. But again, um, yeah, if you have any questions or anything like that, then, you know, just let me know. Uh, but I think that covers everything for um, trailering and making sure that you have all your stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the timer here again. It's going to be a long video, guys. And I know it's still talking and everything else, but I think everything I talked about today is important points. You need to have a good tow vehicle. It needs to be reliable. It doesn't have to be new. It just needs to be able to... You don't want to be stopping every 100 miles and putting antifreeze in the freaking bottle. Um, <coughs> I mean, come on, right? So, good, reliable vehicle. Um, your boat trailer has to be solid. And, you know, you, your boat's got to be in good condition, too. Um, but honestly, that's kind of the least of, of your worries if you can't get to the water. Um, so, that's, those, those are the facts. Those, those are the key points. Anyways, I'm not going to keep rambling on. Uh, I hope you all like this video. Uh, probably one of the most informative videos I think that I've done yet. Um, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, smash that like, like button. And, uh, you know, hit your notification bell there too. And uh, I plan on putting out some more videos here in the coming weeks. we got a lot on our plate, so I'm going to do my best at that. And uh, whenever I go to uncover the boat too, I'm going to do a quick video on how I prep for shrink wrap because how I prep for shrink wrap traveling is different than how I prep for shrink wrap when I'm just storing. Um, so we do protective measures on the motor, on the windshield, on the trolling motor, any points like that. And I'll explain that to you whenever we get to unwrapping the boat. Uh, in the meantime, I got a pile of stuff to do. The phone's been off the hook all morning. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of emails and everything else, text messages, uh, message replies, all of other good stuff. So again, I hope you liked the video. I uh, hope that you know you watch this video before you consider uh, you know doing any great distance hauls. And please, you know, um, I, I'm as serious as I can be. I think about this is that you need to have all this stuff in place to make sure that your trip's going to go off as good as it can without a hitch. Stuff can still happen. Um, again, whenever I get this boat back in the shop again, prior to the next trip, I got to check wheel bearings again. I got to check my trailer lights again. Um, all those wear and tear items, I got to go, I got to check the tires. Um, every time I go, I have to check this stuff because again, it's easier to do it now than it is to do it on the side of a highway. Um, and I can't stress that enough and it's not going to happen, you know, at 10 in the morning and it's going to be a nice sunny day and it's not going to be too hot too cold and you're not going to have the ideal weather conditions it's going to be loud noisy you're going to have cars everywhere you're probably going to have police because you're going to be stopped on the side of a major highway you're going to have huge issues it's probably going to be middle of the night pouring rain uh snowstorm what have you this stuff never happens at ideal sit ideal times so you know, be as prepared before you leave as possible. And I don't know how else to hammer this home, guys, but please take my word for this. Uh, I've seen this a lot uh, from being in the trade. Thankfully, it's, you know, I've had my very limited things I've had to do on the side of a highway. Um, but I like to think that all my planning and prep work uh, is the reason for that. And, uh, you know, take it from experience. Um, if you plan on doing any of this, uh, you're just a young lad starting out, uh, thinking about fishing professionally, um, you know, you're an experienced angler, you're just looking to venture outside of your country, your state, or province, or whatever else, uh, you know, you're looking for different, different, uh, more interesting opportunities, you're just an amateur that you want to go out and, uh, you know, go experience something different for, you know, as a one-off, awesome, go do it, I mean chase it right um but just make sure you're, that you're prepared so that's what this video has been all about make sure you're prepared make sure you get everything checked out make sure you got all your eyes on it t's crossed 
and I'm gonna stop talking now but please um, share this video make sure you know if you know anybody that is wanting to do this make sure that they watch this video um, or something like it because I think I covered a lot of important facts in here and um, you know it could save you a lot of time on the side of the road I mean we all rather be out in the boat fishing or boating or whatever we're doing out there than on the side of a highway trying to fix something so anyways hope you're all having a good day I got to get back to it uh, we'll touch base here uh, in the coming days and uh, see what we're up against have a good one thanks for watching